Hey, what's up everyone? I am back. I've had some connection issues. I hate this. It's not working like every other day now. The reflector application is not working. So I am excited to be back. I've wanted to do some videos for the last couple days. I haven't been able to do any more of the dungeon raids. I also just wanted to do some high level gameplay here. We also just have the cannon elite boosted. So we're going to go and just blow through a bunch of bases. We are on my main account here, Jason W. And again, we have elite boosted cannons activated. That is a cool uh, emblem over there for S lions, lawns. Elite boosted cannon, for those that don't know and haven't had the, the privilege and the honor of using this guy, he shoots about twice as fast as a normal cannon, maybe even three times as fast as a normal cannon. And that just means he pumps out lots of cannonballs and blows a lot of shit up and it's really, really cool to have on your team. So we are coming back here. I'm going to try and take out some of these guys. So we can get our troops with us. And that's a nice choke point there because all of our reinforcement troops are kind of getting stuck there. So what we're doing is we're not summoning any units. We're letting that pass that choke point. Excuse me, we summoned out a mummy right there uh, to take the brunt of of the damage up here. And we're going to summon out another mummy, again, to let our spells come back. Come up here. The mummy helped us by stunning everything. And now we're going to start bringing out a whole bunch of cannons. And we are going to run all the way back here with our Sonic Blast, blowing up pretty much all of those Firebolt Towers. And now it's just going to be tons and tons of elite boost cannons. So now that we can get them safely to us. And you may be thinking we're running a crunch time on time. It is, uh, you know, it is getting there. We are getting close to the one minute mark. But with a whole horde of cannons like this, you're going to see how powerful these elite boosted cannons are. So this is a very interesting setup with just non-stop snake towers. If they were a little bit stronger in level, those things would be extremely deadly. But we're able to stay off to the side and not take that much damage from them. And even when we did win in there with our Sonic Blast, we still didn't take that much damage from those elite boosted, or not elite boosted, but those snake towers. So you notice we're going to get to down probably the last five seconds and we're going to have a barrage of cannons coming up and there you go look at the cannon shots boom 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 like it wasn't even a question of if the gate is going to stay alive it's just how fast the gate is going to die we only needed a few seconds on that gate with those cannons so you can uh you can breathe easy with a little bit of elite boosted cannons backing you up you still aren't unbeatable. You still aren't, you know, godlike. You can lose. And you, you can see there, if we messed up and just goofed around a little bit more, we would have lost that fight because we did only have maybe five or so seconds left. But we didn't, you know, we made a lot of mistakes there. We went back to try and, like, heal our troops. Everything was dead. Wasted a lot of time. It was a pretty solid setup that, like, L design. And here's a huge base with tons and tons of money. So this should be fun. Whenever you see a huge base with tons and tons of money, uh, you kind of just want to click attack right away. Because if you can see it, that means someone else can see it. And if someone else clicks attack before you, they get that loot and they get the shot at it. And then if you try and attack that person after someone else has already attacked him, you're not going to get that massive amount of loot. That loot is only available to the very first person that attacks him. And so if we were to fail, his loot would decrease tremendously. If we were to succeed, his loot would de decrease even more. A very, very nice placement of that Firebolt Tower over there. Let's see two Snake Towers. We're going to call the guys over here, so use them as a shield. We have our heal spell up. We're going to heal up on those guys.
a sonic blast up there. Trying to get over here before those R blasters killed our cannons. We summoned out a whole bunch more. We are going to use the hero scream feature to make them attack even faster and move a little bit faster as well. And we are going to run away now. Pop out a mummy for protection. Sit back here, heal up. And you can see we have a barrage of cannons just wasting things away. I probably should have helped my cannons there with that uh, that's a blade storm, but eh, we're having fun with it. Again, we are plenty of time. We have a minute left, and we have like seven cannons all bunched up together. So there is no time worries whatsoever. As long as these guys stay alive, those seven or eight cannons will devour that castle gate in about probably four seconds. Like, no joke, four seconds. So we just want to make sure that the gargoyles don't bomb the cannons. And we, I think we're safe there. So we called them up here. And there you go. Just balls of fire. Cannon balls of fire just blowing up that gate doesn't stand a chance whatsoever so you can see we're just like messing around having fun sure these aren't like unbeatable bases these are you know maybe 3700 trophies but they are fairly tough 287 medals maybe we'll try and find a, like a 500 metal base here because you can roughly gauge the difficulty of the bases based on how many medals that you win and that goes into fact of if the base is giving you more medals, like a high amount of medals, that means a lot of players lose to the base. The more players that lose to that base, the higher the medal counts. It's already it's a lot crazier than that, but that's the general principle of how the medals are calculated. So if you fight a base like this, this is 372 medals. That means a good majority of players have lost to this base, and he has some pretty strong towers and pretty strong defenses versus this space right here not that many players has lost it's 219 it's about average again even less players have lost to that base here's a base that a lot more players have lost to and you'll notice that it's that same kind of the l shape that is a very very strong and effective base this is a very strong and effective base the choke point is just all one whole big l right there and you can do it on either side, left or right, it doesn't matter. It's just the same, it's the principle of this base. This is just one whole connectivity. All the damage is everywhere right here, just tons and tons of damage. You have lots of R blasters, which are really key. They don't allow any of your troops to come up through here. So we are not going after that. It doesn't have a lot of loot, and it also isn't you know, that great in medals. Here, we'll do this one. This one is fairly challenging, 404 medals, meaning a lot more players die to this base. So he's doing something right. He has an okay amount of metal, uh, gold, 182. A little bit on the low side. I, I want like 200,000 or higher. But for uh, for example here, we'll take this 400 medals and just kind of steamroll it. So we're going to actually think a little bit more here, not mess around, not, not be as playful, so to speak. Uh, but we will still just devour this base, base because the elite boosted cannons are very, very strong. And when we want to, we can be a pretty good player. <laughs> uh, so again, of course, I do mess around quite a bit and entertain some with the uh, stupid, funky comments. But when I want to, I can be a pretty good player. So it's, it's interesting setup. He has every wave has so far have had a mummy and a ogre in it. I really, really don't like that setup. It's just too easy to counter. We're using a lot of archers. This over here, I like this. This is a good setup. And if that snake tower, yeah, the snake tower is pretty strong. So we are going to actually have to heal up. And it's not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be because he does have a nice, nice snake tower right there.
His initial monster setup, I'm not a big fan of for the wave combinations. I'll sit back here, recover. And I, I hate that. The triple barricade that you can just devour. And then again, now we're, your waves repeat. So his first couple waves are now coming out again. We have our archers up there that are taking care of those guys. And we're going to bring in a mummy to help here. So you can see his first couple waves are now kind of pointless. They're not really doing any damage. An ogre popping out of the castle gate really won't affect us at all. You can dance around the ogre. and I mean, unless you're really, really bad, you can dance around ogres. When you're, when you're using an ogre, you want to have frosters with it. So that makes you slower. So it makes it harder to move around the ogres. So you see, we still have... 15 seconds. We could have waited a little bit. I don't know if we got 100%. Yeah, we got 100%, so we didn't need to wait. But we could have waited for another 5 or 10 seconds to allow our cannons and our archers to finish off that corner that we kind of skipped. But we didn't need to. So overall, fairly easy base. Uh, we did mess around some. Got a little cocky, went up, almost died to a snake tower. Had to sit back and recover. But again, now, so we'll try We'll try to find a 500 metal base here. I think we have enough for one more raid to do. And, I mean, w you really want to get these elite boost cannons. So if you are in an alliance that has them unlocked, you know, beg, plead, cry. Tell them that you want elite boosted cannons. They are really, really good on offense. I heard they're actually even really good on defense as well. So, uh, 481. All right, we'll go to this one. I heard they're really good on de on defense too. I haven't put them in my waves yet, uh, but they do do, I guess, a sizable amount of damage on uh, on defense. So that's something to test out. Possibly, if you have like four or five of them together, and then you just blow blow away a hero with four or five cannon shots, that could do a, a decent amount of damage. So I haven't personally tested it. Maybe we'll look at that in another video shortly. So this base, I took a real quick look at the mini-map as we were coming in here. It has a lot more R blasters. So we're going to be bringing out a lot more mummies. And that is how you counter a base with R blasters. And I love that setup right there. That right there is a great, great setup here. And this is why, yeah, this is why this base is so difficult. Because the snake towers in the corner snake tower here snake tower there snake tower there it is almost impossible to get past without taking a lot of toxic damage i love that setup this is probably the most effective snake tower setup that i've seen and bravo there um it is a very very difficult setup to how to get past so great job there you beat me you killed me and unfortunately i didn't get to show off my cannons the, the um the downside to that is especially when they're early on like that if you do bring out cannons they can blow those guys up with no problem because the snake tower can't touch the cannon. But overall, great job for his glory. Great job, great job. So that will wrap it up right there. I'm going to go do some more uh, dungeons on the low-level accounts. And I will be back with some defensive videos on how to use the elite boosted cannon in your wave formation and how good they actually are.